our passage today is the major turning point in the book of Acts. The debate in this passage decides how Gentile believers of, uh, of Christ can be saved. This is an important issue. Can a person be saved by work or by faith in Christ alone? After Apostle Paul's his first missionary journey before his second one, in a place called Antioch, he and his fellow brother Barnabas encountered a group of uh, people from Judea, from Judea. The group of men came to teach the local Christian that unless you are circumcised, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. This teaching got Paul and Barnabas their attention. To them, they believed that there was no need for uh, Gentile believers to do anything extra other than placing their faith in Jesus Christ. However, this group of people from Judea, they taught the local Christians no otherwise. They believed that Gentile believers need to go through circumcision in order to be saved. That is their belief. So Paul and Barnabas had debates with them. Debates with them. And then they, they talk on and on and on and on until there was no, no fight anymore, until the Apostle Paul and uh, uh, Peter, uh, sorry, uh, Barnabas, they won the fight. And that meant that by faith alone, Gentiles can be saved. Circumcision is not required for Gentile believers to, to do. After the incident, after the incident, the Christian community, the local commu community, appointed Paul and Barnabas and some other people to visit the apostles in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, to address the issue, to address the issue whether the sal salvation, the gospel is conditional, whether Gentiles need to go through circumcision. They went up to talk with the group of believers in Jerusalem because they know if these things is not addressed, then Gentiles outside Jerusalem might not be able to you know, you know, accept the gospel and, and believe in Jesus Christ. So they needed to go to Jerusalem. And they also believe that these group of people from Judea possibly were sent by the Jerusalem believers. So they have this assumption, so they needed to visit Jerusalem to talk with them or to confront them, to deal with this issue, whether Gentile can be saved and how they can be saved. This is the major issue. Before they go, they, 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 you know, they, they had discussions. The meeting in Jerusalem certainly will be a very intense one. They will have fights with you know, those believers in Jerusalem, much more challenging and stressful than previous ones they had with those you know, group of men from Judea. But they were willing to go to Jerusalem because they knew what was at stake. The Gentile believers, their faith, their, their inclusion was at stake. So for the benefit of this group of people, the Gentiles, they needed to visit Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, if you were Ap Apostle Paul and Barnabas, would you accept the challenge and go visit the leaders in Jerusalem? Would you confront the scholars, the Bible scholars in, in, Christian, uh, in, in young folk? Would you confront them? Would you have the courage to do that? In our Asian culture, we don't like to have conflicts. We don't like to. We want to have good relationships with people around us. At least keep everything, you know, look nice. We like harmony. We, we love to you know, you know, uh, have good relationship with people around us. Our practice is that we tend to sweep everything under the rug. We don't like to rock the boat. We don't like to have conflicts. We, we just want to have, you know, be in harmony with people around us. So having a conflict, having a fight, confrontation, will necessarily be the last options for us Asian to, to pick. But what if today, the situation you are facing now is big enough for you to think about what is at stake. If the company you are working for, they ask you to do certain things that violates your core value, would you say no to them? Would you dare to say no to them? Or more, would you dare to take one step further and ch challenge them and address the issue? In short, would you fight for what's right? Would you fight for what's right? 
last year I was uh, invited to attend um, a party. The party was uh, you know, for business salesmen and, uh, and women to attend. There were at least three different companies sent their representatives to attend the party um, on the beach. Okay, beautiful and nice. The host provided you know, barbecue and an unlimited alcohol, beers and all that. And the music was great. Each person had a drink in their hand. You know, happy, fun, relaxed. On the surface level, the, the party was to help those representatives, those salespeople, you know, to have fun and relax and chill. But many people in the party took their opportunity to make deals with each other. You know, the sky was blue, the music was great, and in the party, there were so many things going on. So many things. In the circle that I stood in, there, were, there was a, a, a lady around you know, mid-40. She was trying to impress uh, her target in the circle uh, from another company. She said nice things to please the, the, the person. You know, uh, she hoped that she can somehow convince that person, convince that, that person from another company to make a deal with her. So she, um, she put a glass of beer in that person's hand, and she said, she said, Guan Bei, Guan Bei, that means dry cup, okay, dry the cup, okay. In, in in, that means in Chinese, okay? In Chinese means dry the cup. The lady took the word, word literally. In, or, in order to make her target feel that he was respected, she constantly just, you know, you know guan bei with, her, with him. Okay, guan bei, he drink again and again and again and again. And after the third round, after the third round, he started to add one more thing. After fi he, she finished drinking, she would always, you know, put her cup upside down to prove to her, her customer, the, the, her target, that there was not even a drop in her glass anymore. She wanted to prove that. She, she believed that by doing so, by doing so, she can earn, uh, the, the, she can get, get the, um, her target's attention and eventually can maybe you know, get, um, cut a deal with that person. And I was so shocked because the lady just on and on continued to drink again and again and again and again. You know, so many glasses of beer again and again and again. So I was so shocked. I just stood there. I was not so sure what to do. But later on, I started to observe the, 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 the situation and also observe the lady a little bit. And I, I saw that you know, she had a Louis Vuitton on her, on her hand, in her hand, and also her husband was standing next to her. Okay? I realized that this lady and her, her husband knew clearly what they were doing. It's not their first time doing this, you know, to, to try to use you know, alcohol to, to you know, drink with other people in order to cut a deal with you know, uh, the, their target. The, the husband of the lady didn't stop the lady from, uh, you know, from drinking, okay? The lady just drank on and on and on and on. And the husband just stood there. He did nothing, just stood there. And the lady would just, you know, guan bei, guan bei, just continue drink with that, that, that person. After the party, um, I, I came across, across with the lady again. And uh, her face was you know, pretty you know, pale, you know, pretty white. And she looks very sick. Absolutely, she was drunk. And maybe she picked the lady because her face just pale. And uh, whether or not she cut the deal with, um, with the, her target, that was not my focus. No, I was more thinking about how come this lady pushed herself to the limits? How come she do that? Doesn't she care, you know, her, her own body? Doesn't she care? I, I, I thought that, you know, maybe in, in, in the foreseeable future, that lady you know, needed to you know, use the money she earned to go see doctors. You know, it was that bad already. She just drank so many glasses of beer in just, you know, within an hour. Okay. Obviously, money was more important than her family and than her own health. She just wanted to pursue money on and on and on by drinking. Okay. I, I, I went to uh, talk with her, her boss, who hap you know, happened to be my friend, who was also in the party. I said to him, you know, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, this is not right. And communicate with her boss and say to you know, him that, hey, this is not right. You should not you know, teach your uh, employee, your staff to push herself to the limit. I even share with that person my, my faith, my, my Christian belief. I, I share with him. 
And then I, I share with him that, hey, you should not see your employee as a replaceable tool for your company to earn money. That is not right. And my friend, he, he listened and he frowned and he ignored me, he ignored me. I knew it was a long shot you know, to let a secular company not to pursue money and tr train their employees in a Christian way. That is almost, that dif it's difficult and it's almost impossible. Of course, what I say, c say it to, the, to the boss could not you know, you know, change their decision, cannot change their, how they run their company. There's no chance. I failed, but at least I tried. It's my battle, but it's also not my battle. It's God's war. I was trying to fight for God, fight for the gospel. It's God's war against secular worldview. I lost the battle, but I will continue to fight to stand up for God. Do you see anything inappropriate in your life, in your workplace, or even in your family? Even if you fail, you know, fail sharing the gospel with your colleagues, friends, and family. So what? So what? Don't let your assumption or past experience or even your pride, your pride stop you from bringing Christian value into the society. Address the issue that you see. That's our Christian duty. That's our responsibility. Apostle Paul and Barnabas was appointed to visit Jerusalem believers to address the circumcision issue. They surely did count the cost. They knew what was you know, waiting for them. A difficult debate with highly trained you know, scholars, Judaism, Judaism scholars. However, you know, they, 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 they knew that you know, it, it would be a very difficult uh, you know, debate with the scholars, but they still went. They went because they knew what was at stake, you know, Gentile believers, inclusion. They went, you know, with, you know, they, they have the courage to fight the battle for God. You are also called to be brave and courageous to fight for God's glory, to speak up for Him. The situation you see, the in inappropriate things you see in your workplace, in your family, you see, if you see it, that is your responsibility. God calls you to do. If it's not you, who gonna do it? If it's not now, when you gonna do it? That is your responsibility. We, as a Christian, we need to respond to God and fight for God. We need to fight for God. On the way to Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas did not stop sharing the good news. They passed through you know, Phoenicia and Samaria, you know, telling the people in detail about you know, how Gentiles can be saved. There was widespread you know, public support for the missionary work of Paul and Barnabas. Christians in Phoenicia and in Samaria supported them that Gentile believers do not need to go through circumcision in order to be saved. Now, the focus and pressure are on Jerusalem believers. Outside Jerusalem, the Christians support them, and now the focus is on Jerusalem believers. Will they insist you know, Gentiles go through circumcision or not? Will they insist? Let's read verse 4. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostle and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. Verse 5. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. When the Apostle Peter heard about this, he stood up and said to them, verse 7, Brothers, you know that in the early days, in the early days, God made a choice. God made a choice uh, among you that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and belief. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. In this first part of the speech, Peter talked with them about the fact, about his personal witness of Gentile, no, per people got converted. Back in Acts chapter 10, 
which was around 10 years ago before Jerusalem Council. At a place called Caesarea, at a place called Caesarea, there was a God-fearer called Cornelius. Cornelius. He was a Gentile. One day when he was praying to God about the ninth hour of the day, and an angel revealed to Cornelius and asked him to talk with the Apostle Peter about what God commanded him to say. When Peter, Apostle Peter met Cornelius, he shared with Cornelius and, and his friends and family about what happened throughout Judea. Jesus of Nazareth was put to death by, you know, hung up on a, on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. He shared the gospel with Cornelius. While Apostle Peter was still talking, while he was still sharing the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the, uh, from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, even on the Gentiles. This was pre Peter's personal experience. He was there when Cornelius was and his friend received the ho uh, Holy Spirit. That was the fact. He was one of the witnesses. He, that was the fact. In the Jerusalem Council, in the debate, Peter first presented this fact on the table to support his argument. The Holy Spirit come upon Gentiles. The Holy Spirit has, has come upon the Gentiles. After playing this card, Peter continued to you know, bring out the second card, the what about you card. In verse 10, he continues, he says, Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus as they will. Peter asked them to think, to think, what about you? Did you earn your salvation by following the Mosaic law? Do you not know your request is actually against God's will? In another word, do you know that if you continue to do so, ask Gentiles to, go deep, to be circumcised, actually you are God's enemy. It was clear that even your father cannot bear the yoke you are now placing on the neck of Gentile believers. Why are you doing this to them? It was by God's grace that both Jews and Gentiles are saved. There was no more string attached. It was by Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection that we together can be saved. After Peter played this what about you card, after he, he you know, dug out the, the root issue, all the assembly felt you know, this silent. In silence, the people there admitted that even they themselves cannot use work to earn salvation from God. People in the council, they pay attention on the apostles they're sharing. It, it was an eye-opening experience for them because they, it was kind of like first time for them to hear and see that, you know, the, the signs and wonders God had done through these apostles among the, uh, among the Gentiles. After Peter and Paul and Barnabas took turn to voice out for God, the focus now shifted to the top leader of Jerusalem, Apostle James. He was Jesus' brother, the one who ministered Jews in Jerusalem. He was like other, uh, he was like other apostles. They, he, J Apostle James, he, he knew uh, the gospel very well. And he also earned uh, his respect from the Jewish community. He was the one who had the final say. And now the focus came up on him, the Apostle James. Will he be on the side with circumcision party or will he be with the Gentile side, be with Apostle Peter, Paul, and, ba and Barnabas? Which side he will be on? If he choose to be with circumcision party, then, hey, brothers and sisters and young folk, you might need to you know, call your doctors and do circumcision if he sides with the circumcision party. What he's going to say is a big deal. Let's go have a look and see James' response. In response, James said, si Sim uh, Simeon, which, who is Peter, has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with this, the word of the prophets agree. Agree. 
Yes, according to this verse, we know that Apostle James was also on the side with uh, Paul and Barnabas and then um, and the Gentiles. He believed that Gentiles did not need to go through circumcision in order to be saved. Apostle James went on and you know, and he quoted a passage from the book of Amos to support his own arguments. He said, After this, I will return. I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins and I will restore it that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. James wisely followed what Peter said just now. He as well put out the what about you card. In his case, it's what about us? What about us? Listen to me, my fellow Pharisees. The repetitive, you know, sinful behaviors of ours and our ancestors, we, we broke the covenants with God. It was because of God's grace and God's election that we Jews and Gentiles can together receive salvation without string attached. It was by God's calling and election people are saved, not by ethnicity, not by ethnicity. The histor historical Jews and so-called physical Israel or modern day Israel, they cannot be saved unless they believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. They cannot be saved unless they believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. There is continuity in between Old Testament and New Testament. All the promises to the Israelites will be fulfilled in Christ and in the church. So James, you know, he, he make an announcement in verse 19. He said, therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, who turn to God. The Gentile believers do not need to cut off their foreskin in order to be saved. They don't need to cut off their foreskin. But listen, James was not done yet. He said, for the benefit of my fellow Jewish believers, a set of rules I hope that Gentile believers can follow. And these are the rules. Abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and from what has been strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations, Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogues. The reason why to make this request was to help our fellow Jewish brothers and sisters to help them receive and accept the gospel. If you continue to only focus on yourself and don't care about how your fellow Jews their, their, their feeling, their, their understanding of the gospel, then you are being selfish. You need to think about others. You need to be other people-centered. You need to give them chance to, to hear the gospel. You need to do that. So please, for the sake of their benefits, please, for the glory of God and their chance to be saved, sacrifice your legal freedom and follow the Mosaic law in order to bring the good news to the Israelites. For their good, please follow the law. And the Apostle Paul agreed with this. For the benefits of Jews to be saved, in Acts chapter 16, we see that in Paul's second missionary journey, he brought Timothy with him. People knew that Timothy's father was a Greek, a Gentile. So Paul circumcised him in order not to let Timothy become a stumbling block for the local Jewish to people to receive the gospel. Paul agreed with James. He willing to you know, compromise, you know, to sacrifice his freedom to that more people you know, hear about the gospel and accept Jesus Christ, their savior. It's all for God's glory. It's all for other people's benefit. And that was at the conclusion of Jerusalem Council. No circumcision and don't be selfish and be other people centered. The debate was intense. There was fight in between Christians, not always rose and butterfly. There was fights among Christians. The two parties met in, in the middle. They had an agreement. They had an agreement for God's glory and for the future, the church's future direction to go. It was because of this council that we Christians can now sit in this church in young folk to hear God's word, to read God's word. It's because of this council that we Gentiles can sit here. Now, knowing the conclusion they had, 
Would you willing to sacrifice your freedom for others to be saved or for others to grow in Christ? Would you willing to be other people centered for other people's benefit? Would you willing to sacrifice your freedom for God's glory? I want to share with you my uh, personal imper imperfection. You know, uh, I can be very nice uh, to my fellow uh, brothers and sisters, my spiritual family in the in church. But it's not easy for me to be as kind and as nice to my parents. You know, working at church is some, sometimes can be very busy. Um, so there were many times when my parents called me, I was just like, yeah, right, yeah, hey, I'm busy. Talk to you later. I don't want to talk with you. I, I, didn't, I didn't say it out, but that was my attitude. Okay, I just, yeah. Um, and I, I did reflection on, on that uh, several times. And um, I, I realized that because I, 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 I knew that they were my parents, they are my parents, and they love me. So what, no matter how bad my attitude is, they will still love me. They will not walk away. So you know, I take advantage from that, uh, from that, from their love to me by treating them badly. You know, I just not be patient with them and don't show them much kindness. You know, um, uh, th th not like how I treat my fellow fellow uh, brothers and sisters in young folk. Okay, and the situation got worse when I had conflicts with my parents. I always thought that they were they they were the one wrong and I was the one right. You know, their ar argument doesn't make any sense and I was the one right. You know, logical arguments. You know, good, and uh, I just don't want to talk with them. Okay, I did not give them patience. I get, didn't give them kindness, and yeah, just don't didn't give them much time. You know, such a good boy. Yeah, you know, sarcasm. Okay, you know, I I thought about this many times, and I said to myself, Hey, Marcus, you know your father is not a Christian. He's still thinking about whether or not to believe in Christ, and your mom is a Christian, but she rarely goes to church. She maybe only go to church maybe four times a year only four times a year you know do you, Marcus do you, do you really know this do you really care about their 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 life you know the salvation you know when I when I prepare for this passage when I try to apply this passage to my you know my personal life you know I was like wow it hit me bad you know um, I, I say to myself Marcus would you willing to sacrifice your your f your freedom or maybe you know your time or even to you know you know don't care much about your pride and just pay more attention on them and try to be nice. Let them see God through your behavior, through how you live your life. Let them see Christ-likeness on you. Don't show them your attitude, but show them Christ-likeness. Man, this application hit me hard. I was like, Phew. to be honest, it's really not easy. It's not really to not really easy to treat my parents nicely because you know they know my um, you know uh, weakness. They know how to you know you know uh, make me trigger you know trigger me. Okay, so to me like to to love them and uh, you know like how I treat brothers and sisters in church is you know difficult. Um, so I also want to pass this challenge, this application uh, to you. Do you treat your family? or your colleagues, or even friends, nicely? Do you show them your, your um, Christ-likeness? Can they see God's glory in your life? Can they? Would you willing to work, to, to apply this? Would you, willing, would you willing to practice? Show them your love, show them God's glory. At the end, I want to um, reveal uh, review our two points today. The second point that I want to make uh, was that you no know, sacrifice for God. If today you are in a situation you have every right to be angry and have can do what seems is right, I want to challenge you to pause for a minute. I want to encourage you to think and think, you know, be other people-centered. Think about whether your decision, your behavior can bring the people closer to Christ or bring them away from Christ. When you are in a conflict, make your decision based on this question. Can you bring them closer to Christ or bring them away from Christ? 
in an argument, this is your sec uh, in a conflict, this is an option for you to pick. And second one, in a conflict, if you see that you know something inappropriate, God lets you see it. God wants you to deal with it. You see it, you deal with it. That's your responsibility. That's your calling. You see it, that's your your calling. If it's not you, who then? Who gonna do it for you? Who gonna answer that calling for you? If not now, when you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? Do it now. Maybe you have been praying and think about certain things for so many years. R respond to God's calling. Maybe that is your mission. Just like Apostle Paul and Peter and Barnabas, they had the mission go to Jerusalem and Council to to confront the Jerusalem believers. Maybe you also have a calling to deal with the issue that you, you see. They, that's your um, calling. So, two options. Fight for God or sacrifice for God. Fight for God or sacrifice for God. If you don't know when, what to choose, which one to choose, I encourage you to pray and read Bible. You might ask, hey, Marcus, this, is, no, this guidance is not solid. You want something more. I want to encourage you and also remind you that you have God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling you. That is Peter's, Apostle Peter's argument. When we believe in Christ, Holy Spirit dwells in us. You can pray to God. Holy Spirit indwells in our hearts. That's a major difference between Christianity and other religions. God lives in your heart when you, after you believe in Christ. You can pray to Him, pray to God, and God will show you the way whether to fight or whether to sacrifice. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for today that we learn that we can you know, either fight for you or sacrifice for your glory, Lord. We, may you, we ask you to continue to uh, give us wisdom to know how to serve you in our home, company, and even this city, Lord. May, us, uh, may more people you know, see your glory through us. So help us to live our Christ-likeness and help us to be patient and kind and, and be loving to uh, people around us, Lord. We lift up our lives into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.